The engineering students in India will relate to this book a lot. Driving straight into one of the random pages in the book, here's what I read. Studying engineering was in my dream. I wasn't interested in biology too, but I had to make a choice, so I chose engineering. Just because everyone else was taking that path. Dad decided then to put me into IIT JE coaching. I had classes in the morning and study sessions in the afternoon. Every day I would come home in the evening. Long lectures, tutorials and study hours accounted for nearly 12 hours of my day. My day was really strenuous and I was not attuned to it. The preparations were taxing. Often mom and dad told me that if I worked hard for another two years, I would settle down well in life and not look back. Why do parents and teachers create such a false idea in life? Why don't they tell us that we have to do well in college, prove ourselves in our job and work hard every day and earn every single penny? Why don't they tell us this and prepare us for reality? Parents in India do not understand that stress creates feats and worries and finally youngsters give up their dreams. Their aspirations become dormant and their lives become listless. Most youngsters stop pursuing their dreams to fulfill their parents' wishes. But every decision that youngsters make and every action that they take has consequences on the entire family. The youngsters' creativity due to such strain is restricted and they live for the sake of society and not for themselves. There are students who win the race. They study in the best colleges and they get the greatest jobs. But many others living in a competitive climate are overwhelmed by anxiety. They succumb to depression and finally implode. The main character in this book revolves around a boy from a middle class family named Swaraj. He was also in this same rat race and not for two but three years as he couldn't get a good seat in engineering in one attempt. He was what we call a dropper. In high school, Swaraj was struck with grief and anxiety and lived in panic and regret. His eyes were filled with tears of helplessness as he sauntered aimlessly in the dark. Then came a ray of hope in the form of music, which helped him overcome his afflictions, pick up the pieces and look ahead in life. As a young boy, there's lots of auto-suggestions that he gives himself. And they are much like the kind of auto-suggestions that we give ourselves, unrestricted ideas. The author does a good job here by providing these auto-suggestions as pearls of wisdom within these thoughts that come in a random order, just like a free stream of consciousness. There's lots of such one-liners that are food for thought. I'll share with you some of them. Age steals the wonder and innocence of childhood from us. Another one. Sometimes, silence is the best way to communicate to loved ones, especially when you know they don't want to listen to you. Another one. We call it self-respect, but the truth is, we veil our ego in the name of self-respect. It's not pride, but love that comes first. And another one which I'll connect with a different idea as I talk to you right now. Admit strangers, when you come across someone you know, you feel relieved. Almost all of us go through similar phases in life. When we are young, we live with our parents. Then we go for college and many of us live away from them. How we make friends, how we handle puberty, how we manage relationships, that's what is shared in this book. It's all written in the form of a fictional story with very relatable characters. Within a few pages, you'll realize that this is how your learning curve progresses in different phases of life too. Just like Swaraj. When you read this book, it may feel like you're reading your own personal diary at times. The book gets highly personal in the description of the boy's sexual desires, but he shows his parents have given him strong morals and he does try to keep himself from swaying too much and losing track of his dreams. And that's something that we want to pick up too. All through his life, Swaraj kept his dreams alive. And this is the aspect of the story that we all want to experience when we read this book. How he does that, guiding by the usually common strengths that most of us have, parents, a passion and a true friend. And how, when everything came in perfect harmony with the universe, his predicaments eventually became accomplishments. On a lighter note, when I read the book, I was living my own college life once again, which in itself is such a popular topic that it makes for an interesting story, college life. The people from Bitspilani, the college on which the story is based, would love it more because there's even more in common with them. Use the link below to buy the book from Amazon and give it a read if you relate to the theme.